Hey my friends, welcome to my session with the Made Summit. This is gonna be amazing. This whole summit's amazing. I wanna thank uh, Zen Made and everybody involved in the team for putting this together. How cool is it to be able to sit in your underwear and learn about business stuff? Uh, my name is Joshua Latimer. I'm very excited to spend the next few minutes with you. I'm gonna do my very best to over deliver massive value to you that you can apply quickly in your business. Not just talk high level things, but to actually give you applicable things that you can apply in your business right away so that you can get a result. Uh, my job is to give you a result and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. One of my favorite quotes to dive right into this is everyone sees the wine, but no one sees the crushing of the grapes. I love this quote because when you look at maybe an overachiever or some really successful person in business or someone you look up to, when you look at them, you're seeing like you're seeing the result today. But we weren't with that person over the last decade or two or three decades when they were grinding, when their grapes were being crushed, right? Maybe you can relate. Small business is very hard. If you're married and have a family and kids and you have a small business, it's even harder more hard. It is very difficult, right? You have business, which is a whole giant, you know, emotional roller coaster of ups and downs. You have marriage, which is the same thing. And then you have parenting on top of it. You mix it all together and it can get really tough. Well, I can relate. I have five kids. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I just want you to know that, yes, I built multi-million dollar businesses. I had a cleaning company that was very large in Michigan that I sold. Um, but I gotta tell you, there is a lot of pain and suffering along the way, and I'm hoping that what I share with you uh, right now is gonna help you avoid as much of that as possible so you can build an automated business that serves you and your family, that changes your family tree, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Now, I'm gonna play a very short but funny video clip, okay? <laughs> this kind of accurately describes the story of my grapes being crushed. This video is basically me as I started my business journey right so this is a lady <laughs> on the news on live news actually crushing grapes and this is like me in the beginning of my business watch what happens next oh. <laughs> oh my god that's basically me trying to start my business falling on my face my friends and family <laughs> she a hard fall out there. Well, okay. gosh, I hope she's okay. That's my friends okay. and family we're watching we're me as I attempt to right. do my first business, right? Hopefully that came through clearly, but it's, it's a joke, but it's like this true metaphor of me making mistakes, wasting money, getting stuck, being completely broke. I mean, we had our electricity shut off at one point early in my, my first uh, cleaning business. We had a car repossessed. We had a lot of things happen. A little bit about me. I'm five foot ten and a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of dad jokes. I'm sorry. Uh, I have five kids. I'm an expert kid maker. Uh, I was the quarterback on my high school football team, and we lost our homecoming 69-0. to zero, And it was pretty much mostly my fault because we weren't very good. Uh, but I have been married 16 years, actually 17 years uh, this week, which is awesome. And it says I need a ladder because I'm married so far up that I need a ladder. My wife is extraordinary and probably my biggest secret weapon in business. Uh, my entrepreneurial journey started cleaning windows. I know a lot of you have a maid service. Maybe you do windows, most of you might not. Uh, but the business model and the structure is really similar, like basically the same thing. The thing that we deliver is different, but this is an actual picture of me when I started out. And uh, this was my first work truck. If you notice, it's not a truck. <laughs> it's a 1993 Chevy Cavalier uh, with rust spots on it with a 28-foot ladder strapped to the roof of the car. It was the humblest of beginnings. I used to hide my car when I would go to give estimates to customers because I was so embarrassed of my car, I didn't want them to see it, right? And then, <laughs> of course, when they would hire me, I would pull back in in the same car to do the job and they'd look out the window like, oh my gosh, who... who who is this weird guy? What did I make a terrible mistake? Uh, but that's how it started for me and my wife, right? Long story short, the first couple of years were very hard, about two and a half years. And one day I discovered the power of systems. And you're going to hear a ton of people presenting talk about systems. And maybe you have some systems. Maybe you don't know what the word means. Maybe it's just this abstract thing. Uh, but you know, even having an elementary understanding of systems can change absolutely everything for your small business. It is incredibly powerful. And my business started to just grow like a rocket ship when I started getting obsessed with systems, specifically 
sales and marketing systems, and we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, eventually, we did automate and build the company to doing over $180,000 a month, and I was working less than five hours a week in the business. That's a true story. Yes, this is on the internet. Yes, that might sound like a fake thing. It's not a fake thing. I didn't go to college. I went to community college for five minutes, so technically I went to college, but I don't have some big education. I don't come from an entrepreneurial family. We didn't have a silver spoon or a trust fund. We had nothing. We lived in a trailer park and had a couple years of struggle, and then boom, everything shifted for us. And the reason was systems, specifically sales and marketing systems. Now, after I sold that company, I ended up selling it. We moved to Costa Rica for a year and a half with my wife and kids, and we just lived the dream down there. And uh, actually, when we were in Costa Rica, <laughs> I ran over and killed a monkey driving this exact 15-passenger bus. It was a total accident. I feel terrible I killed the monkey. But what a weird story. Who has sold a business, moved to Costa Rica, and ran over a monkey? We called this bus the Gringo Express. Now, once I got settled in Costa Rica, just to give you some more backstory, then we'll get into some things. Um, I started a podcast called the Quick Talk Podcast and a software company called Send Gym. Now, Send Gym, some of you Many of you probably use SendGym. Uh, it's pretty well known in the cleaning industry. It's a marketing automation software. It sends postcards and gifts, like you can send brownies and gift cards to your clients and to your prospective clients. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with SendGym. It's amazing. I recommend you get a free trial and try it out. Of course, I'm completely biased. And then my podcast. If you want massive free content, if you want to learn about more systems and what even you get in this presentation, just go to quicktalkpodcast.com or search for Quick Talk Podcast in any pod-catching app. Uh, there's over 300 episodes. It's pure gold. I interview many, many multi-million dollar home service company owners on there, and it's awesome. Now, after we moved back from Costa Rica, we moved back to Michigan, and we bought what we call our Fassel because it's like a castle house, but it's on 23 acres, and it's a farm, and we had chickens and like a woodshed, and it's, it's like a Fassel. It's a farm castle. That's where we currently live. Uh, right now. Uh, a couple of other things about me. I'm very scared of spiders. Like I act like a little tiny three-year-old girl when it comes to spiders. And my life goal is to give away $100 million to widows, orphans, and Christian missionaries. That's my goal. So I want to ask you, what is your goal? What is the mountaintop for you? I cannot stress the importance of having a vision, a clear, vivid vision of exactly where you want to get in your life. If you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? If you don't have a destination, what good is a map, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, to kick things off, if you're taking notes, uh, this is something I put together uh, a couple years ago, and we call it the five stages of business growth. And you can have this document for free. I think it's maybe 30 pages or something. And if you look at your company, there's five distinct stages that every single cleaning business will go through uh, on their journey towards an automated turnkey, profitable, fully systemized, hands-off business. And it always starts with stage one. Now, stage one, I put truck. Maybe you drive cars, you don't have a truck, but it's the same thing. You're a stage one business if you're the person doing the cleaning. If you're the one scrubbing the thing, if the mop is in your hand, you are stage one. And that's amazing. That's where we all start. Your job when you're in stage one is to understand what systems you need to get to stage two, where most of your time is spent doing administrative tasks. So you have some cleaning crews or you have some cleaners out there working and maybe you're cleaning sometime, but if you're stage two, more than 50% of your time is going to be spent answering the phone, running estimates, doing paperwork and payroll, and dealing with upset clients and going to the bank and doing things like that. That would be stage two. So if, if your vehicle is full of sticky notes and clipboards and you're driving all over the place and coordinating things, there's a good chance you're in stage two. To graduate to stage three, you need another layer of systemization in your company. There's benchmarks you need to hit. And this document, I'll tell you how to get it in a second for free, uh, kind of lays out all the different types of systems you need. It's like a roadmap to get you where you want to go. So if you are in stage three, what that looks like is more than 50% of your time is spent directly doing sales, driving business into your company, or as I like to call it, you're feeding the beast. 
you know, after you get a bunch of employees, maybe you have five or 10 cleaners and you have an office person, maybe even a couple people in the office, what happens is there's a lot of mouths to feed and your job in stage three is to feed the beast to make sure that you're always at capacity with your revenue goals and that your sales are on track. You're building relationships, you're networking, you're doing direct sales, you're shaking hands and kissing babies, you're doing estimates, you're doing all this stuff to feed the beast <laughs> and give me an amen like if that makes sense for you i don't know if there's like a comment thing on here or not but um, if you can relate to any of these first three stages let me know because i've been through all of them to get from stage three to stage four requires a whole no additional set of systems of a little bit of complexity. And this is where you're the general manager. Now for a service company, like a maid service, what this would look like is you are kind of the captain of the ship, but you're not the one pulling the ropes and lifting the sails and like cleaning the decks and doing all that. What you're doing is you have a sales team. You have an admin or office team, and then you have your field service workers or your cleaners as a different team. You might even have like an operations manager, and you have a little bit of middle management, and you have people doing the sales, and they're held accountable to targets. You have the office like maximizing their production and, and doing customer satisfaction and keeping all the books correct and doing all the office-y things, and then you have your cleaners doing that. You're kind of stepped back, zoomed out a little bit, and you can hop in wherever you're needed to help fix something or to coach someone through something, but you're a little bit more hands off. Now the real uh, magic happens when you can get to stage five. Stage five is when you can hire uh, a general manager to run your company. Now your business needs to be at a particular size to kind of feed all the mouths involved and having a, a business large enough to do this, but it's not as hard as you might think. You can get there a lot quicker, especially today than ever before in history than most of you might think. Some of you have had companies for 10 or 20 years and they're still really small and you're a stage one or stage two business. But I'm telling you, if you can get obsessed with this idea of systems, if you can get obsessed with understanding your numbers and putting a few things in place, uh, it can happen really quick. It can happen really quick. In fact, I personally know several different maid service companies that have scaled to 100,000 a month or more in less than two or three years. And it's happening more and more often because of software, because of the internet, because of different tools, really like Send Gym and other tools, because of the community and the education that's available. Think about what you're doing right now and how all this information is going in your brain. This wasn't a thing five or 10 or 15 years ago. This is amazing that you can even learn this, right? So anyway, if you wanna get this document, there's, it's a massive resource. All you gotta do is send a text message to, to the number 44222. Now take a screenshot of this slide really quick, cause I'm, not, I'm gonna keep the train moving here. You're gonna text huge list with no space to 44222. Text huge list to 44222 and you can get this for yourself. Take a screenshot really quick. I'll give it five seconds. Four, three, two, one. In three extra seconds for the really people that were freaking out and yelling at their computer right now saying, give me three extra seconds. Two, one. Okay, awesome. I wanna ask you a question. What is the foundational cornerstone? What is the foundational cornerstone of a successful business, any business? What do you think? What's the answer? Sales and marketing is the correct answer. Sales and marketing feeds all the mouths. Sales and marketing fixes almost every issue that could possibly come up. Sales and marketing gives you options. It gives you swag. It gives you a little bit of confidence. When you have more leads to run than you can even do, you're in a, that's a good problem to have. That's a different type of stress. You know, having more money in the bank and more jobs in the schedule and needed to hire more people, that's the type of stress you want rather than what most people have where they're barely staying afloat, they're not profitable, they're, they're, when they get a bid, they, they bid it low because they're scared they won't get any more estimate requests that week. And we're constantly coming from this fear and scarcity mindset, right? So sales and marketing is the most important system. So I wanna ask you a follow-up question, and it's how do you create a lever? And I'm gonna explain what a lever is right now. Imagine that this lever on the screen here was sitting on top of a box. Okay, so this little cheesy icon, the graphic I have of a, of a lever, imagine it's on a box. And imagine you could put a dollar in the top of the box. You could pull the lever and $7 would come out the bottom of the box. 
I want you to like visualize that, like really fit, like picture this is like in your kitchen, sitting on your kitchen counter, and you can literally put a dollar in the top, pull a lever, and seven dollars comes out the bottom. Like imagine that. That is what you need to create, and that's what all high achievers and really fat, rapidly growing companies have created to scale so quickly. They have a sales and marketing lever. They put a dollar in ad spend, marketing costs, whatever, and they pull it and it spits out $7 out the bottom. Now, to do that, you have to build a system, right? And we talk about systems. The system is like the way that you do the thing. A lot of people, they only do what I call reactive marketing. If you're taking notes, write down reactive on one side of the page and write proactive on the other side of the page. And the difference here is that reactive marketing only uh, is not a lever. And it doesn't give you control over how big you can grow your company. And, and when you don't have control over how many estimate requests come into you, it's harder to have control over the prices that you charge. For example, if you get 10 estimates and you close half of them, okay, and, and you're barely staying afloat, and every month you get 10 estimates and you close half of them and you're just barely making it, your pricing is going to reflect that scarcity. But what if you got 73 estimate requests a month, but you could only do 20 of them? What would happen to your pricing? It would go up. So what we want to do with the levers, we want to create a sales and marketing system to where you put a dollar in, you get seven out the bottom. And that, and hopefully that's making sense. Let me know if you guys have questions. Uh, I think my contact information will be on here as well. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with systems is they don't have to be complicated. All marketing is actually really simple. It's just that most companies don't do it proactively. They only do it reactively. So to go back to proactive and reactive, here's the difference. Reactive marketing is any kind of marketing that you don't have control over the quantity of deal flow that you get. I'll say that again. You don't have direct control over the quantity of a deal flow that you get. Deal flow is just a fancy way of saying leads, the amount of phone calls you get. Now, proactive marketing, on the other hand, where you put a dollar into something and get $7 out, that you do have control over the quantity of the amount of deal flow you get. For example, reactive marketing would be something like uh, getting referrals or um, being on like the Google local listing, right? Those are good things. Reactive marketing is good. It's not bad. It's good, but you're not in control of it. So what I mean is, is let's say you get 25 clicks a month onto, you know, ABC Maid Service in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's awesome. Like we want those clicks, like sell those people your services. But how do we take the 23 clicks a month and turn it into 150, you know, clicks a month. We, we can't, right? The only way we can do that is by targeting and going proactively after our perfect ideal customer in a proactive way, rather than just hoping more people refer us or hoping that we, we, we get another job through a reactive channel. Another reactive channel would be something like uh, uh, Angie's List. Um, some people love Angie's List. Some people hate it. I don't really care either way. It can work. If it works for you, do it. Um, Home Advisor, Angie's List. These are great things. Uh, but you can't you can't make the 11 calls a month that you get from Home Advisor or Angie's List. You can't turn that into 73 calls. You can only do that by creating a lever using proactive marketing. Now, if you're taking notes, I hope you're having fun so far. Uh, here's the three pillars for any kind of proactive marketing, whether it's Facebook ads, whether it's direct mail, door hangers, yard signs, whatever it is, door knocking, networking. Here's the deal. The first pillar, okay, the three simple pillars of all marketing, the first pillar is hyper-targeting. You have to acknowledge that not all customers are created equal. And I think we already know this, but here's, here's what I wanna challenge you with. Look at how you're marketing your company right now. And are you laser focused on the exact people you wanna serve or are you more broad? Are you a brain surgeon or are you a general practitioner? If you want to serve super ultra luxury homes for premium pricing, then every part of your messaging on your website, on your Facebook page, on your emails, everything should look, smell, feel, and taste exactly like a company that is the brain surgeon luxury, you know, uh, high priced homes brand, right? You want to target the right people. If your target market is soccer moms, you want to target them. I remember in the first couple of years of my business, I had some of the most nightmarish customers you could ever imagine. And these were clients from hell, terrible, terrible, mean, rotten people that would treat me like garbage. And I was doing it for next to nothing. And I had an epiphany one day. And the epiphany was that I had attracted them to me. 
everything about how I did business smelled like a company that should be treated like I was being treated, that should be beat up on their price when they're already half the price of the other person. <laughs> and me and my ignorance, I would accommodate that early on. And I changed everything for me when I got really disciplined about only marketing to the right people. Hyper-targeting means, are you, are you using demographical information to find uh, the homes that have a certain household income? Do they have a certain home type? You know, different neighborhoods in your community have different types of people. Do you clean for retirees? Do you clean for like the 32-year-old attorney with the trophy wife? Is it like that guy? They, where they buy way more stuff than they can afford so they look cool? Is that your client? Is it the soccer mom? Who is it that is your perfect customer? Where are they? And how can we proactively get our message in front of them? How you get it in front of them, totally up to you. But how do you get your clear message in front of the exact right person? That's number one. If you're not hyper-targeting, you're gonna, your marketing will not work even close to as good as if you are. The second pillar is personalization. Now, I, I often ask people, I say, uh, what is every human's favorite word in the whole world? So I'll ask you that. What's everybody's favorite word? It's their own name. <laughs> That's their favorite word. We love ourselves. You love yourself. Even people that don't love themselves, they're like, well, no, Josh, you know, I'm, I'm humble and I'm here to serve. And even people that say that sincerely, trust me, they still really, really like themselves a lot. We like what we like. We like the music that we like. We like to eat the food that we want. We want to live where we want. We want our house to be a certain way, to smell a certain way. We want the sheets in our bed straightened out a certain way. We want our shirts folded a certain way. People are, our whole world is about us. Everything we do is in an effort to serve us. And even people that want to serve their family, they still it's about them because they want to serve their family so that they're the kind of person that serves their family, which makes them have increased status. So what does this have to do with marketing? Well, it means that your messaging, when you're hyper-targeting the right people, needs to be personalized to their world. For example, when we would do postcards, we had these insane postcards that converted at crazy rates for years and years and years. And they were so simple. But what we would do is we would target just the lakefront homeowners on a certain lake, for example. And on the cards, we would reference the name of that lake. We'd say, you know, Lake Fenton homeowners, you know, window cleaning special for Lake Fenton waterfront homeowners. And we'd only send that message to those people. And there might be a gated subdivision on a golf course on the other side of town. We'd have a different card for them. So we're hyper-targeting the right people that have the money that need our services, but we're personalizing the card by referencing their house, their situation, right? The fact that they have kids, the fact that they have pets, the fact that they are retired, the fact that they are a soccer mom or whatever. You want to personalize things as much as possible. One of the really cool things that Send Jim does is it allows you to use your phone and you can take a picture of a house from the street. Then you can push a button and it will mail that house a postcard with a picture of their own house on the front of the postcard. Another thing you can do is you could take a picture of the subdivision entryway or the street sign, you know, uh, Thomas Street or something. And you can take that picture and put it on a postcard that gets sent to just that entire neighborhood or just the lakefront homes in that neighborhood. You can click some buttons and it says that. And what, is, what it does for you as a marketer, as a small business owner, is it, gives, it sends a hyper-targeted, personalized message to your perfect customer, which is insane, right? But again, this isn't about Send Jim, our software. This works with anything you wanna do. You wanna hyper-target and you wanna personalize it. And you can even do this with Facebook ads, believe it or not, because you can geo-target down to, I think, a mile radius. You just gotta get your messaging right so that the person reading it feels like you are in their head living in their world. The third pillar to all marketing is multi-touch. You know, people have the attention span of like a goldfish. I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard it said, right? People have attention span of eight seconds or 12 seconds or so. I've heard three seconds. Who knows what it is? I think it's just self-evident and obvious at this point that it's short. We don't have a big attention span because we're all being marketed to relentlessly. The noise is loud. And when you're marketing to your local market, I want you to understand something. You're not saying, hey, 10% off cleaning service, sign up now. You're not saying your message to like an auditorium of people like watching you present. That's not what it is. And so what happens is sometimes we do some marketing, we do a little bit of this, we'll try some postcards, we'll do some door hanging, we'll do something, we'll dabble with something and then nothing happens. 
and so we get discouraged. We take it personally. We think we're dumb or our market's different. Josh, you don't understand. The employees here, they're different. The, the customers here are different. They're cheap. They won't pay that price, Josh. I can promise you with certainty that you're wrong when, when you think that. And if that upsets you, I'm super sorry. I think you're awesome. I'm sure we'd be friends. But I'm telling you you're wrong. I've personally worked with over a 1,000 over a thousand. I'm not talking worked with like doing a webinar or a, or a teaching like this. I mean, on the phone working with them. Over a thousand businesses just like yours. And it's always wrong when people think their market's different. They're not following the fundamental principles that they need to succeed. They're not hyper-targeting. They're not personalizing their message. And they're not doing step three, which is getting in front of them multiple times. Again, when you're, when you're saying, hire me, hire me, hire me, you're not talking to a room full of people staring at you. It's more like you're talking to a parade of people walking by you. Imagine there's a parade and there's 5,000 people walking and they're looking, they're looking that way and they're moving and you're on the sidewalk like, hey, 10% off your maid service, highest quality. We ta- have great customer service. Like you're saying all these things that everyone says. It's all white noise. Nobody cares. It's, they're numb to it. And even if they did like what you were saying, you only say it once. And that's the biggest problem. Once you've identified who you need to hyper-target, once you've figured out how to personalize your message to those people, you need to stay in front of them over and over and over and over. When you do this, you will create a lever. And when you create a lever, you can put $1 in the top and have seven or 10 or $15 come out the bottom over and over. And depending on the size of your market, you could scale that up to a one or two or $3 million business in a few years Uh, especially if you're an aggressive go-getter that loves systems. But the foundational cornerstone, as I said before, is sales and marketing. That's step one. Step one is to figure out how to put a dollar in and get $10 out. That gives you leverage. It gives you options. It helps you be able to hire with confidence and scale and, and know what you're doing. And that this is the biggest bottleneck for most small businesses. Uh, one simple idea that's practical for you if you want to hyper-target and personalize a message and multi-touch has to do with what's called neighbor marketing. Neighbor marketing, some people call it five arounds. And it can work really well. The problem with it is that it's hard to be consistent with it. But you can do it, and we did it in my company very successfully. So let's pretend that you did work for one of these homes. Well, after you're done doing work for one of those homes, you leave a personalized message on the door of maybe the five or 10 closest neighbors to the client that you have so far. And you do that every single cleaning, every single time. Repetition is the key that makes this whole thing work. You'll get more calls on the third and fourth time that you leave something than you ever did on the first time but most people never do it or they'll only do it once and they get discouraged. Uh, The benefit of marketing to the neighbors of your current customers are are wide, like there's a lot of benefits. For example, they have similar demographics, they probably have similar incomes, right? Similar home needs, their homes are gonna be similar in age, right? They're gonna have similar family scenarios. A lot of times there's the retirement communities, there's the young family communities, and there's the super like shiny, young wealthy people that think they're awesome communities. (laughs) There's all the different kinds of communities, right? Uh, The other benefit is that there's bandwagon psychology. And when they see your your cleaning vehicle coming in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out all the time, more and more often, they're getting your message and you're in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, It gets really easy to sell a huge percentage of the neighborhood. There's just something about it, the way that humans are, that they want to get involved with with momentum, something that's growing, something that's winning. Like if everybody's doing it, they want to do it. Uh, But you got to stick with it. But there's major benefit to that. By the way, Send Gym automates neighbor marketing completely. Like, so the whole process of sending a personalized, a hyper-targeted message, like to all the neighbors of your current clients, our software does that on its own while you're sleeping. Like that's what it does. So just keep that in mind because it's awesome. The results of neighbor marketing are higher close rates, uh, less price objections, better route density, route efficiency, and more social proof because of the bandwagon psychology. So like when they see you in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out, and they know that you're doing seven of their neighbors that they talk to at the neighborhood barbecue, when you come give them a quote, it feels weird to them to reject your quote. So you can raise your prices, there's less price objections, there's there's a higher close rate, it just works that way. Does that make sense? You can see how that makes sense, right? Hopefully this is helpful. Okay, so how do you turn it into a lever? I'm gonna go through this part uh, relatively quickly. There's three different kind of P 
pieces to business planning. You have principles, strategies, and tactics. And what we've talked about so far are principles. The hyper-targeting, personalization, and multi-touch, those are principles. Now, most small small companies that are kind of stuck and they're, they're broke and it's not working very well, they are obsessed with tactics. So they'll go in a Facebook group and they'll argue over what type of mop head to use and they'll argue over what type of like oven cleaner to use and they'll, they'll argue about all these tactical things that to the high-minded CEO, like that is the last thing that we care about. We're looking at the structure, the principles, the strategies of how we're going to get in front of the right people, the right messaging, how we're going to deliver on our promise to them, all the operational systems. But the last thing we're worried about is the little tactics that will, you know, use this silver polish instead of that silver polish or whatever. Principles are like the foundation to a house. It's the most important thing. And that's why it's so hard for these companies, even ones that have been in business forever, they've been, they, they're very tactical. They know every little trick on how to do their job and how to be the best cleaner in the history of the world. But then I see these younger companies that are three years old doing a million and a half and they have an absentee owner who's making a couple hundred thousand in income and like living the dream. And it's like, well, could, could they clean a house better than the old timer who is doing, you know, 80 or 120,000 in sales? Like, no, like the small owner operator is amazing at cleaning houses, but I want the business. I want the lifestyle. I want a sellable asset to protect my family, right? And if you want that, you have to focus on principles and not get obsessed on the tactics. Now, strategies, they go on top of the foundation. So if, if principles are the foundation of the house, strategies like the blueprint and the design of the house which is pretty awesome. Tactics come last. Tactics are very important, but you don't start with tactics. Tactics mm -hmm. come at the very end. So tactics are like the color of paint you choose or the pictures on the walls of your house. And that's why whenever I see people arguing online, it's like all these keyboard warriors, you know, being mean to each other or just being way opinionated and throwing all this stuff out there. And if you're, if you're new in business, it can overwhelm you really quickly. We gotta go back to principles. You have to be a man or woman, woman of integrity. You have to do the right thing when no one's looking. You have to deeply care for your staff and for your community. You have to, or it won't work. Uh, after those things are in place, you have to uh, understand the principles of business, like knowing your numbers, knowing how to make a profit, understanding what a profit and loss sheet is and a balance sheet, right? Uh, all these things are, are simple, even if they intimidate you right now. They're very simple. A couple YouTube videos in an hour or two, and you'll understand it. You just can't be scared of it and run away from it. With sales and marketing, the principles are very simple. There's three of them. We just talked about them. Hyper-targeting, personalization, and multi-touch. Don't argue about whether the wall should be green or yellow or blue when there's not even a, a hole dug in the ground yet, when there's not even a foundation laid, when you when you have a pile of sticks on sand and you're calling that a house and arguing about the paint color, that doesn't make sense. So step number one in terms of principles is actually be an amazing freaking company. <laughs> like I said, a man or woman of integrity, like it, this is a principle thing, like it's non-negotiable. Uh, step number two, try to visualize your current customer data. If you already have customers, and you want to do neighbor marketing, use a, a geocoding service online to figure out where your current customers are. Like how cool to look on a map and see all the different concentrations of customers and you'll identify little pockets and clusters. There's different services online where you can upload your customer address list and it will turn it into a map like this for you. I think it's called reverse geocoding or just geocoding. Uh, so you can just Google that and just kind of identify, all right, we've got a high concentration over here. How do we go deep in this neighborhood and get 20 more clients out of this one neighborhood, right? Because we already have we already have 10, right? That's what you want to do. You don't want to be spraying shotgun bullets all over the place. You want a sniper rifle. You want to hyper target the right people and personalize your message and multi-touch. So you're going to find the most valuable pockets and clusters and then you're going to uh, make it rain like a hurricane and sign them all up for your services. <laughs> Step th number three is understand your revenue curve and your numbers. You might not know what a revenue curve is uh, briefly. It's just understanding what, what sales number are you supposed to hit this month to be on pace to hit the, the number you want to hit for the whole year. 
Um, it's pretty easy to figure out. I actually created a free software tool for this too. It's called Revenue Buddy. It's completely free. It actually sells nothing. It's not a trick. Um, it's just a useful tool. And so what you can do is put in all of your historical sales data, and then it will create a graph for you that looks like this, and it will help you understand your monthly gap. So if you have a goal to do X this year, and last year you did Y, there's a difference between those two numbers, right? That's what we got to grow into. That's the gap. Your job is to close the gap. Revenue Buddy will visually explain to you how many dollars per month in gap you have to close the gap and hit your goal. So you can just go to revenuebuddy.com. You can check that out. It's pretty awesome. Uh, here's, here's some strategic things that might help you as we get ready to close this out. Um, when you're trying to grow your business, there's only a few different metrics that are probably really important for most businesses. The first one is your goal. Do you need to do 20,000 this month? Do you need to do 53,000 this month? What, what do you need to hit this month to be on pace for the year? You need to figure that out. The second thing you need to know is your base. What amount of revenue are you going to do this month without any additional effort on your part? Without doing any of the proactive marketing, that hopefully you'll start doing after watching this. If you didn't do anything, what would just fall in your lap all on its own, right? So if you have your goal and you have your base, the difference between those is called the gap. And you wanna understand your gap broken down to the daily, weekly, and monthly level and always be looking at it. Like every day, you should memorize it. It's also very useful to understand your average ticket or in maid service, I would look at the annual value of a customer, but you could also look at monthly. On average, what are they worth to you per year or per month? And it helps you with your planning. And then your CAC is your customer acquisition cost. Your uh, max CAC is the maximum amount of dollars you would ever be willing to spend to acquire a customer. For example, if an average customer is worth $1,000 to you and, and your profit margin is 30%, let's say, then you make $300 a year off of a $1,000 a year client. Now, would you want to spend more than $300 to acquire a customer that nets you $300? Probably not. Uh, you could, but you need to determine that. And then when you're doing proactive marketing and you're measuring things and paying attention, you can kill all the things that aren't working and just focus on the one or two levers that are working and go bigger with them. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. I guess the bottom line is to begin at the end and reverse engineer. So look, just like I said in the very beginning when I, when I started, uh, what do you want? What's your mountaintop? What do we want this business to be? Do you want it to be a million dollar business? If so, how long are we going to work at it to get it there? And then start working backwards. If we got five years to get it there, break it back at the end of year four, the end of year three, the end of year two, and the end of this year. Where do we need to get to this year to be on pace? to get what you want. Uh, people get very confused with numbers and every $100 your business makes really isn't even $100. It looks more like this. Now this is not accurate percentages or whatever, but the principle is still the same. $100 really looks like uh, $20 <laughs> because the first 20 goes to labor, the next 20 goes to labor, the in maid service, the third 20 might go to labor too, I'm not sure. But you have all these expenses and, and then the last 20 bucks might be your profit, right? So you got to be careful with your numbers. But I want to ask you a question. Would you give me $20 right now, if you could reach your hand through the computer and give it to me and say, here, Josh, here's $20. Would you give me $20 if I gave you back $20? You're probably thinking like, that's a dumb question. That doesn't even make sense. What are you talking about, Josh? Well, let me make it a better question. Would you give me $20 right now if I gave you $20 every year for the rest of your life? Would you do that? Ding, ding, ding. Uh, yes, of course you would, right? Everybody would. In fact, you would ask me, is it okay if I give you $200,000, Josh? And then you give me $200,000 a year for the rest of my life, right? That's what marketing is. That's what proactive marketing is. If you understand your numbers and you understand the three foundational principles, which are hyper-targeting, personalization, and multi-touch. I certainly hope this has been useful for you because when you figure this out, you will have a lever and everything will shift in your business. Your confidence will go up. Your ability to pay your staff more will go up. Your profitability will grow up. Uh, your business will grow and things will be better. People say money doesn't buy happiness and I agree, but being broke don't buy happiness. 
and your poverty isn't serving you and your broke, messed up business. It's not systemized. It's stuck. It's not serving anybody. It's, it's messed up. Let's fix it. Let's get obsessed with sales and marketing. If you need help, if you're interested in exploring send Jim, the software we have, I would love to invite you to try it. We have a 14 day free trial. You can just go to sendgym.com and check it out. There's a bajillion training videos in there that help you with things like this. I certainly uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish, uh, wish you the best in your business journey. I just want to thank again, Zenmade and everybody involved on the team for the opportunity. Listen, take care. God bless. Uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you later.